What is up everybody, it is AJ here and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I use the Surface Laptop Studio as my daily driver. I switched to the Laptop Studio when this device first came out and I can tell you after a couple of months, it is by far my favorite computer out there. I've had pretty much all of the other Microsoft Surface devices and they're amazing, but honestly, none of them really hold a candle towards the Surface Laptop Studio for my workflow. To give you an example of that, one thing that really I'm gonna go off script now, but when I was setting up for this video, I just naturally use your laptop in laptop mode. But when I was getting ready for this video, I just snapped the screen, brought the content closer to me, and then I use a touch screen to scroll through my Word document so I can read and of course focus on what I'm saying. It's little things like this where the laptop studio just enhances your workflow, where you just naturally think, hey, I'm gonna speak to the camera, I'm gonna bring that script closer to me. I've got to the touch screen so I can scroll through. I need to mark something up, I've got the pen here. So we're gonna go through a lot of the things that I love about the Laptop Studio. And of course, at the end, we're gonna go through a few of the things that I don't quite admire about this device. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you wanna supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. To give you an example of my typical workflow, I have at any given point in the day, at least five or six tabs open, as well as Microsoft Outlook, Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and a few other programs. So the computer never really gets a break. And normally I'd max out any computer that I'd get. I know I'd wanna get the best processor, RAM, the biggest hard drive, and of course a dedicated graphics card. But with the Surface Laptop Studio, I've actually done the opposite and I've gone for the base model. So I have an Intel i5 11th Gen H processor, 16 gigs of RAM, the 256 gig SSD, and of course only the Intel Iris Xe graphics and not the dedicated Nvidia model. But honestly, it handles everything I throw at it like a champ. And of course, when you are talking base specs, I mean, even an i5H processor and 16 gigs of RAM, that is pretty good for a base model because there are a lot more underpowered computers out there. But in terms of laptop studio, the base model is actually really, really powerful. Of course, though, if you look at the entire Surface Laptop Studio lineup, you can get a lot more power out of the device that you choose. You can get either the i5 or the i7 variant. They're both the H series processors, so they've got a higher clock speed, and of course, they've got more wattage to them, so more power. You can get either 16 or 32 gigs of RAM. You can get up to a terabyte of SSD storage, and you can get the dedicated NVIDIA 3050 Ti graphics card, or if you choose the business model, you could actually get the NVIDIA RTX A2000 GPU if you've got business applications that you need to render. But like I said, I'm actually really happy and actually surprised that I'm happily using the base model i5 16 gig variant. Of course, one thing I say you need to get with the Surface Laptop Studio to really maximize it is the new Surface Slim Pen 2. We're gonna go through how I use the Slim Pen 2 in a bit, but honestly, if you're getting this device and you are an office worker, the Slim Pen 2 just gives you so many different ways of interacting with your content, whether it's in meetings, whether it's taking notes, marking something up, or just trying to explain something. I highly recommend getting the, the Slim Pen because you'll get so much more out of your laptop studio. Using the laptop studio as my main device in 2022 naturally means I'm on a lot of video calls and Microsoft has put in so much effort to make sure that the laptop studio is the best device on the market when it comes to video calls. At the top, you get a 1080p Windows Hello enabled web webcam, which is super, super clear. You get dual Farfield Studio microphones with voice clarity. Basically, what that means is that they're gonna focus on your voice while drowning out the background noise, so even in noisy areas, the people on the other end of the call can hear you really clearly. And you get quad omnisonic speakers with Dolby Atmos, so you get amazing speakers in this machine. And of course, in terms of the screen and what you're looking at, you get a 14.4 inch pixel sense display with touch and pen input. It's got the 120 Hertz variable refresh rate and it's got a unique three by two aspect ratio, which we're gonna go over later in this video as to why three by two is actually really good on the laptop studio. I'm unsure if you're aware of this, but being on video calls for most of your day puts your computer under a lot of stress because it is essentially processing your video and audio feeds on the device and then sending it to the internet while simultaneously processing the video and audio feeds of the other people from the internet down to your computer. It's also likely running other programs in the background as well as being connected to your external monitor and peripherals and there doesn't really ever get a break. Laptops of course have been designed with webcams and microphones and speakers for years, but they were never really designed and tested to be used like they are in the pandemic, where we're basically always on video calls. 
And I'm sure either you or you know someone that is complaining their computer gets hot and slow and can't really handle being on calls all the time. When it comes to the Surface Laptop Studio though, that again is where Microsoft has shined because I've never once felt this computer really get hot and it's never really lagged, especially after being on video calls all day. And this comes down to the unique engineering of the heating in the Surface Laptop Studio, or I should say the cooling in the Laptop Studio. What you have inside the Laptop Studio is essentially a tuned dual fan active system that allows the heat pipe to go across both processors, the CPU and the GPU if you've got the GPU model, and this allows for shared cooling. When you pair this with the unique design of the base of the Surface Studio that allows for a lot of ventilation and consistent airflow even when it's on your lap, you end up with a package that is really cool even when it's being used to, in high performance modes. Again, you put the tech specs aside and what you end up with is a device that's gonna let you take video calls all day and it's not gonna get hot, it's not gonna get slow and laggy and it's just gonna be a really good experience to use. When it comes to the battery life, that is of course another big question and concern that people have when it comes to a laptop. I've done another video on the Surface Laptop Studio where I put it through some benchmarking and specs and basically putting it through its paces and in that video, we got seven hours and 24 minutes of continuous use. But again, if you put the text and specs aside, I can tell you this thing lasts all day just on the battery charge because I'm getting between seven and eight hours of continuous usage, which that's essentially a full day of work. And of course, on the, the whole conversation of the battery, let's talk about charging the laptop studio. On the left-hand side here, we have, of course, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, which can be used for charging. And on the right hand side, you have the Surface Connect, which is the better way of charging because it is the magnetic surface charger. Although honestly, I've been finding that using the USB-C is a lot more handy because it's not proprietary. I go around to different places. I have a lot more USB-C chargers around. When I go to work, I can dock in with my USB-C monitor that charges the device. In terms of charging, you have ample options with the dedicated Surface Connect or using the USB-C uh, with the Thunderbolt 4 connection. The form factor is another reason why I love working on the laptop studio. It lets me transform from a laptop to a tablet and back again super seamlessly, all while still being super lappable. I've had tablets, I've had laptops, but they've never been really great being two-in-ones. I think this laptop studio is the first time I can honestly say it is a phenomenal two-in-one device if you don't worry about detaching it. Another reason the laptop studio and the form factor is really important to me is that I use the pen really heavily. Whether I'm marking up and taking notes down in OneNote, I could be annotating PDF documents, I could be sharing on a collaborated whiteboard, or I could be marking up a PowerPoint presentation, being able to quickly grab that pen and use it both in laptop mode or drop it down in studio mode and write furiously for hours. The Laptop Studio has the form factor that lets me do both and of course it lets me do both really comfortably. The Slim Pen 2 is the one accessory I say you need to get if you are considering getting a Surface Laptop Studio. You can tell the pen was definitely designed with the studio in mind, the way that it hides perfectly under the bottom of the machine and it attaches with really strong magnets so you're not gonna lose it but it also charges while it's attached, so you're never gonna run out of battery. The Slim Pen also has this really cool haptic feedback sensor, which you can customize the intensity, and it also gives you a really nice sensation when you are riding with it. It's got over a thousand points of pressure, which means that you get good feedback, as well as almost no latency, and really is the best digital experience on a Windows machine. You can customize the buttons on the back of the pen, so you can press it once, twice, or press and hold to launch a different application, as well as going into both the Windows 11 settings and the Surface app for even more customization. Again, text and specs aside, basically when it comes to the Slim Pen 2, it's gonna enhance the way you use the Surface Laptop Studio and you can customize it to suit the way you work. So if you are looking at getting a Laptop Studio, definitely check out the pen as well. Using the Studio as an everyday laptop is amazing because the screen is fantastic. It's the 14.4 inch pixel sense display with of course pen and touch input but being 14.4 inches makes it noticeably bigger than a 13 inch device, but of course not as big or as bulky as a 15 or a 16 inch. And that's of course because it also has that three by two aspect ratio, which gives you more vertical screen real estate, so you get more on the screen without having to scroll. But the real magic here is actually when you drop it down, 
into laptop mode or sorry, into studio mode, the aspect ratio is actually the exact same as a regular piece of paper, which means if you're transitioning from a physical notebook onto a digital notebook like Microsoft Journal and the Laptop Studio, you have an easy transition and honestly, it is a note taker's dream. If you wanna see my video on Microsoft Journal, I'll link it in the description down below. It is a great little note taking app that's not as powerful as OneNote, but it's just super simple and just perfect for scribbling down notes. And then of course, the trackpad on the device, it is all glass and it is large enough um, and really smooth with lots of gestures built into Windows 11. It doesn't actually have physical left and right clicks, so you do have to get used to the haptic feedback when you're pressing either single or double pressing. It does feel a little different the first couple of times, but then you really get used to it and it is a much nicer trackpad than what you'd find in a lot of other devices. One annoying thing I have to mention though is that if the device is in studio mode like this and you are using it, if the screen does turn off because it's gone into standby mode, you can't actually use the Windows Hello camera to log in. You need to double tap on the screen and then use your PIN or your password. Thankfully though, Microsoft did allow that double tap to wake, which means that when it is in this mode, you can of course just double tap instead of having to lift it up and press the power button because like this, of course, the power button is under the keyboard. Now let's talk about a few of the issues that I have with the Surface Laptop Studio. The first one I have to say is the fact that this device is aimed and tailored towards creatives, but there is no SD card slot built in here. You still have to use dongles and adapters. The device does of course have two USB-C ports on the left-hand side that are uh, Thunderbolt 4, the Surface Connect and the headphone jack, but no SD card for me is a big miss because it means you still have to get an extra piece of accessory just to get content from your camera onto the device. Also, having the two USB-C ports is amazing, but having them both on the left-hand side is, again, in my opinion, a miss because sometimes your cable's just on the right-hand side. So for ease of use, if we put a third USB-C port on the right-hand side, it just makes it easy to plug things in sometimes. Another issue that I have with the Surface Laptop Studio is the fact that it is only Wi-Fi enabled and there's no 4G cellular options available. I travel around quite a bit for work and being able to have my device always connected to the internet with our hotspot or tethering is actually such a big advantage. Unfortunately, with the Laptop Studio, if I want to use this device while traveling, I need to rely on a hotspot, which is just that little bit more cumbersome to my workflow. And of course, my third issue with the Laptop Studio is the weight and size of this machine. I personally think if you are someone that's going to use it just as a regular laptop and you're never going to use it in studio or pen mode, you're not going to want to go for a Surface Laptop Studio. Granted, it's got a beautiful screen with great webcam and of course amazing speakers, but you could opt for a device that's thinner and lighter like the Surface Laptop 4 in either 13 or 15 inches. And those devices are both lighter and a bit more portable. I actually love the Laptop Studio and I don't mind putting up with the weight, but a few people that have actually seen and felt it and they say they don't wanna use it as a tablet, you know, they just option for a regular laptop that's just that little bit thinner and lighter. So I guess this one's a bit more of a thinking about what your workflow is and are you gonna use it as a pen and touch enabled device or you're just gonna use it as a regular laptop. But honestly, my three big detractors of it not having an SD card, no LTE and of course being that little bit heavy aren't really that big when I compare the package that is the Surface Laptop Studio. I still think it is the best laptop on the market today, especially for my workflow and especially for being a pen enabled device. And I'm happy to put up with a bit of extra weight and tethering to my phone and getting a, a dongle for my SD card but it would be nice to see some of these things added in the next version of the Surface Laptop Studio. So there you guys have it. That is my workflow with the Surface Laptop Studio as a daily driver. I honestly love this device for the versatility that it gives me. Let me know what you guys think of the Surface Laptop Studio in the comment section down below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna supercharge the way you use your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.